hear the wanderer alone in tempest tossed. No storm can hide that peaceful radiance beam me. Since Jesus came to seek and save the lost, give me the Bible, holy message shining. Welcome once again to this year Bible Studies Words of Wisdom. I'm your host, Elario Davis. And I'm your co-host, Pastor Denny McCulloch. We are so, so happy that you are joining us once again. And it's for us a privilege to share God's Word with you. And if you want to start with a word of prayer, as we always do, please join us as Pastor Denny pray for us. Okay, let us pray. Our dear God and Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you that you give us this moment that we could engage in this Bible discussion. We ask your blessing. We ask that the Holy Spirit would be with us as we present, and also for the viewers that they may understand the message you have for them. Alice, we pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 So my friends, as we last told you that we are studying an important series on health. We call this series Healthy and Happy Bible Seminars. So it has to do with health and what the Bible says about health. The Bible reminds us that God wants us to be a prosperous spiritually, but also in good health, even as our soul prospers. So God is interesting, interested in our well-being physically and also spiritually. So as we continue with our study, we have a very interesting study for you today. It is entitled, How Important is Rest? What, what rest has to do with our health and how rest can affect our health or a good rest can improve our health? That's our study for today, Pastor. Interesting yes. study, not true? And once again, you know, when we think about rest, rest is one of those things that a lot of times is sacrificed by especially young people, working people, by students, you know, because they want to accomplish whatever else thing that they are doing and really and truly it's not one of those things that is good to sacrifice because it has um, serious implications in regards to our overall health all right and that is why we are presenting this topic for today very good thank you pastor as you introduce so let us go and use a, a bible introduction today yes okay so we have this story all right he says he slept he died then lived to tell the story yes and what is this story who is this person okay so we see this story says that when their brother got sick they sent this message to dr jesus mm -hmm. they said lord he whom you love is sick and they expected jesus to come right away but Jesus did not come right away. Instead, the Savior delayed for two whole days before he began his journey. Finally, he said, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go away that I may wake him up. Mm -hmm. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. And why did they say so? All right, and it's a famous story in the Bible, Pastor, of this um, person. This person was Lazarus. And he was sleeping. The, the, um, the sisters of this man, you know, they sent to call Jesus because um, they, were, they were close friends. Jesus was close friends with the family. And so they wanted Jesus to come to perform this miracle before he went to sleep, uh, spiritual mm -hmm. sleep. Yes. All right. What Jesus was referring to here is not the sleep that we go through every night. All right. This is a spiritual sleep. And as we know, the story is taken in John chapter 11. It's a story when Lazarus had died and Jesus performed a great miracle to bring him back to life. Okay, so Pastor, what do you think about this story so far? It's a very interesting story because it tells us about he slept, he died, then lived to tell the story. Yes. So what story? So I guess as we uh, go along in the, in the story for today, we will understand a little better. Yes. But but, you know, to, to sleep and to rest, I think is something very important that uh, what we are talking about because, you know, as young people growing up, you know, we don't believe it's important to go to sleep early and all, all those things. Even though I grew up in a time when there was no light and my parents, they live in a village that they, they, we used to go to sleep along with the folds. Yes. You know, and as 
as dusk, as sunset, and it started to get, get dark, my parents would say, my grandparents, rather, would say, time to go to bed. So they would have, we would, we would have drink tea, like, you know, bush tea, and we would eat a piece of bread and uh, leave fruit and go to bed. So I used to go to bed early and we'd wake up very early in the morning as, as the rooster start to crow three o'clock. I would hear my uncle start to get ready. He would, he's a farmer, so he would get ready, wake up very early. And sometimes I would wake, but I see that it's too early and I continue sleeping until it might be six o'clock, right? But um, they didn't tell us anything, any benefit about sleep and rest and those things. So today's lesson, we will know a little bit about the benefit of sleep and rest. And um, this story is a very important story that we will run along with it throughout our studies. What is it about sleep? He slept, he died, then lived to tell the story. Well, please keep in, in tune with us and you will know why. Yes, now, and we also encourage our viewers to stay with us for the second part of this seminar because we have the first part we deal mostly with the, with the physical part of rest and then in the second part of this program we engage more in the spiritual aspect of rest amen right, so stay tuned for that very good so sleep what is sleep then why do we need sleep why do we need rest well let us see some scientific uh, evidence and importance of what uh, the doctors have discovered and how they will share with us. You know, nowadays, Pastor, I noticed that, you know, when we go to the doctor, they, they wouldn't tell you much, much things. They would just ask you, what do you have? What are your symptoms? And they will write and prescribe, buy this, buy that. But they don't tell you, look, you need to sleep more, you need to rest more. You know, they don't really educate you. In other words, I don't know if I'm, I'm the only one here, but it yeah. happens to me. I don't know if it's your experience as well. Yeah, well, that, that is, um, I, I believe that's a general experience for most people that go to the doctor. Yeah. You know, and, so let us see then. Um, the scientists have discovered that sleep facilitates the production of growth hormones. In other words, all our, our muscles grow, you know, our bones grow, our body grow. We, we grow, um, you know, in a unique way. You know, it's not one part grow and the other part doesn't grow. Everything grows together harmoniously. As the Bible says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. But listen, sleep stimulates and the, the, the production of these growth hormones is very important. Then that's why young babies, you know, um, they sleep so much. Yes, and they are encouraged to sleep a lot. Yes. I have a granddad, and, and my son say, Daddy, uh, he sleeps a lot. <laughs> yes. But sometimes in the night, the baby don't want to sleep because he's so much in the day that every bit they wake up in the night. I say, oh, no, that's, that's so terrible. So you can't sleep now, and the baby sleeps during the day, and in the night sleep, but wakes up a lot. But sleep, generally speaking, my friends, it stimulates the hormone growth. And another aspect, Pastor, you want to share the second one? And then it the third strengthens one. the immune system, enhancing resistance to illness. All right. So if, if you're more prone to getting sick, mm -hmm. and you could evaluate your life. And if by chance you're not sleeping sufficient, then what you need to do is just get sufficient rest. All right. Because this helps your body to have a strong immune system. And that is important. We don't want to get sick. And I like the next one, Pastor. Sleep increases brain function. You know, we always say we have bad memory. I can't memorize. I can't remember. Um, I can't concentrate. So the, that means to say when we sleep less, we have more problem with concentration and also with brain function. If you are studying, you are going to school and you are not getting enough rest, you will have problem here. So it's very important then that we sleep. Scientifically speaking here, and uh, also students that tend to get sufficient sleep every night, you know, um, the studies show that they tend to do better right. in school. All right. So once again, if you're not getting enough sleep as a student, try to schedule your time better that you will get sufficient sleep. All right. The last point here is that sleep helps us to be alert, enabling us to make good decisions. All right, and as we are studying the Healthy and Happy, mm -hmm. happy Seminars, the, the objective of all of this is that you could reach a point that you could make better decisions 
that you could be healthy and happy because life is all about decisions. It's one of those God-given uh, rights that God had given to us. And so we want to make the, the, the most out of it, all right? And then we maintain ourselves in good health and we will make better decisions. It means to say that when you have good sleep, good rest, like you're more sober, you're more calm, less irritation, you can concentrate better, you can think better, and you can make better decisions. And, you know, you don't short temper because, you know, sometimes you're, you are so irritated, you haven't slept well, so you wake up in the morning and, you know, you are rushing to work and, and a lot of stress. So as long as you sleep enough, you will have better control over yourself and you will be more alert. Can you imagine driving, you know? Uh, man, this is dangerous, you know, and uh, you have to have enough and good rest. You know, it could put your life in danger yes. and the other people's life in danger. And, and we know that um, driving while you're sleeping is more dangerous than when somebody is drinking and driving. What? It's more, more deadly. Oh, you, you see importance of rest. So we are talking scientifically here, my friends. So it's very important. Rest is very important. So let us see then. Um, let's see what the Bible and health practitioner says about adults. What adult needs of rest? For example, they say adults need between six to eight hours of sleep daily. So what are the dangers of insufficient sleep? Let's go to a shoe and fast faster. Let, let me start with this one and then you, you get, get, get on to the other one. True or fast, my friends, if you can interact with us, put in the chat or somewhere there and, and, and let us hear from you. So when we decrease amount of sleep, when we decrease the amount of sleep, we usually increase the amount we eat. Is this true or fast? Generally speaking, yes. The less you sleep, the more you want to eat. You have people that go to bed 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the night, and by 10 o'clock, they're hungry. Yes. <laughs> if you had supper at 6 o'clock and you're still awake 10 o'clock, you know, you, you still feel hungry. So it's true. If the less sleep, the more hungry you, you will get and you want to eat more. So it's good that we go to bed early, yes, but, you know, have a good supper two hours or three hours before we go to bed. So you can have a nice smooth sleep. Your, your stomach can be at rest and your body can be at rest and your mind. And you can get a good night rest and wake up energized yes. next morning. The next and one. Closely connected to that is because you increase the amount of food that you eat. The more food that we eat, then the more weight we gain. All right. So we see this close relationship between gaining weight and lack of sleep. Exactly. Okay. And the other one, true or false, Pastor? The more food we eat, the more weight. Wait, oh, yes, that one's good. No, the third one is more weight gain increases the risk of hypertension and diabetes. Is this true or false? Well, it's true. Huh? The more weight you gain increases the risk of, of hypertension because then your body is heavier. You, you have more um, the, 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 the arteries have to stretch more over your body. The heart needs to beat more. So definitely it's a risk, you know, and weight and obesity is a, a really danger as we saw in another study yes. previously. It's, it's a danger for our health. So, yeah. so well, if we, we sleep less, you know, it makes us be more a, a risk to diabetes. So let us be careful with that one now. But, but really also, you know, that obesity puts a strain on all the organs in the body. So uh, most of the organs need to work more mm -hmm. in order to process the extra food that you're putting in the body. All right, sleep deficiency makes us drowsy. So some people use caffeine to stay alert. Mm -hmm. All right, and this, this really is a, a downward spiral. If you would engage in this, this habit, all right, this will be a downward spiral in your health because caffeine, it affects, yes, it, it contributes to you feeling more alert, but then at the end, the side effects of it is that you become, you know, anxious. Mm. And so you want to continue drinking more caffeine. Oh, my. And then also it says that um, true or false, caffeine it gives a high, then a low, and people tend to get addicted. 
True or false? It's true. You know, because, you know, it, 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 if you are tired and you haven't slept good last night and you need to be alert, you need to do something, you drink a cup of coffee, you are and you're alert again. As that wear is done, then you're going down to your normal again. And you need another dose to booze up. But at the, in the long run, this can create um, addiction. Yes. And when we are addicted to caffeine, it's something terrible. You need, you need to have it every day. And once you don't drink it, you have a headache. Ah, kind of these symptoms can happen to you. Yes. All right. And the last one we already mentioned it is that lack of sleep results in fatigue, causing accidents and deaths. Very good, Pastor. But many people find it difficult to sleep. So sleeping pills is a big business today. So what can we do to get a good night's sleep free of charge without these needing to use uh, pills and all those things? How can we get? Do you know that a lot of people, Pastor, today really have problems to sleep? And sometimes there are minor things that they are not doing what it may be causing this to happen. And let us see a few of them today. Let's start with number one. Yes. Establish a regular time to go to sleep, including weekends. This one tough, Pastor. Pack it by experience. You know, I am a, you know, we have people that they are the uh, early birds and late birds. That's what they call them. I am a tend to be a little late bird people, person, but my wife is an early bird. So we balance, you know, Pastor. She would go to bed very early, but I make sure I lock up everything. And then she will get up very early and she start doing everything early in the morning. And, and you know, when I want she's up, you know, it, automatically you, you get up too. But she will get up before me. Yes. And I will tend to want to go to bed late, later. So you need to establish a safe time. And anytime you establish, it needs to be before 12. Yeah, any, any time before 12, the hours sleep before 12, midnight, it double up in benefit for you. It's like you're sleeping two hours. So it's good to go to bed early, but establish a fixed time. Okay, so if it's 9 o'clock, yeah, 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock, make that yeah. a regular practice. Keep it a regular practice. Okay, the next point is to shut off, shut out the light and keep the bedroom dark and comfortable. Uh -huh. All right, so this is another tip. I know some people they they can't sleep without a light on, uh -huh. but I found out I found out one time, you know, watching this documentary, is that um, in the prisons they they would often use a, a method, you know, to really punish the criminals. Okay. And what they would do is they put them in a dark room with one little light, you know, not a bright light or just a little light. And what this would do in time, you know, it would create this uh, a, a really psychological trauma mm -hmm. in them, you know. It's, it's really uh, something serious. And so we see something very simple as making the room completely dark. It helps you to have a deep sleep. Wow, interesting. Yes, I, I remember a pastor says that he couldn't sleep because some lights were on and, and that was affecting and interrupting and really the light avoid you from having the this this developing these um, you know um, what you call these hormones in your body that really create the rest that we are talking about okay so also remember that you need to allow the electronics no television or computer in the bedroom it's nice to have a computer or television in the bedroom before you go to bed and do this light it precisely the light in your eyes avoid you from having that uh, a better rest and the light remember the light uh, uh, blacks off right the, uh, the the hormone that you need to develop to sleep so my friends is very important then that we use these little small little tips to avoid and to help us to sleep better yes and okay. this this other tip you know it takes a little bit of planning you have to be intentional yeah okay. all right this one is to eat dinner three hours before you go sleep so that the stomach can rest all right one of the reasons why people can't sleep at night is because their stomach is full mm. and so the stomach would continue working until that food is processed and then this also affects people who who, who eat right before they go sleep 
and then in the morning, the afternoon, we wake up and feel drowsy. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because even though they are sleeping in the night, their stomach continues to work, and so the body is not completely resting. Oh, interesting, interesting. So see, my friends, these are tips yes. that you can use. And one last one, say relax with a warm water. You know, if things get kind of a little tough and tight and you really can't sleep, relax with warm water, shower, soft music, or uh, meditate, pray before you go to bed. And, yes. you know, sometimes we have problems, we worry. We will go to that in a while. And then these things, you know, are on our, mo are on our, on our mind. We have a, you know, the discussion, the debate there, and we haven't fixed up those things. All these things can play a role of not allowing you to have, have a good sleep. So relax, get a little bath, and, and I would add to it a little massage, you know. Yes. If you don't have someone to do the massage, if you're not married, and well, let the water do the massage for you, warm water and yes. cold water. I think the you miss one here, Pastor, is the ban alcohol and caffeinated drinks, right? Because oh. stimulants, they prevent relaxation, all right? You know, the caffeine and alcohol, they make you more alert, or they give you that, that sense of being alert, which, you know, this, the science have proven that it's not really that you're more alert, but, you know, it's just a stimulant. It makes you feel like you're more alert. Mm. But then what this does, it prevents you from sleeping, all right? So avoid these things before you go to sleep if you consume it. So if you don't consume it well, we encourage you not Oh, okay. consume it as so well. I mean to say, if you drink like those those beverages that have been caffeine, like you know, yes, th that will prevent you from having a good night rest. Yes, and so it's good to check those energy drink. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people like to drink and see if it has these stimulants and avoid all of them. Anything that 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 stimulates you as a person, you know, stimulates your mind. Don't drink that before you go to sleep because it will affect you from. Uh, falling asleep. Yeah. All right. So, however, good sleep therapy also treats the mind. All right. So, the mind is the center of operation. And we say avenues to the mind, right? All things are gearing to have a good mindset. And also, bad things can give us a bad mindset. Now, the mind and sleep is very important. Here's what the Bible has to say about uh, the mind. In the, in the book of Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 22. All right, it says, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bone. All right, notice, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. So it's therapeutic when we get good, when we have good mindset when we are at peace, when we are not fighting, when we are not angry, when we are not upset, when we are not thinking on revenge, when we are not trying to, um, you know, think what the other person was trying to say. What did he say to me? And what he did to me? All these things we need to be aware of, that these can uh, bring instability to our mind and it can create some kind of mindset that will affect, negative mindset that can affect our sleep. So, a merry heart, do it good for the mind or for your health, for your brains, and it makes you well and much better. And the next one, be okay. thankful for what? For the good things of the day. Mm -hmm. All right, Psalms 105 verse 1, it says, O give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, all right? So we must be positive and thankful for what God has given to us each day that he gives us life. All right, and the last one is don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Trust that God will take care of it. One of the big reasons why people can't sleep at night is because their minds keep running about what will happen mm -hmm. in the future, all right? And so one of the things you need to do is to, 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 to pause and meditate and to identify the things really that, are troubling your mind and then you pray about it and leave it in God's hand but, all right as Matthew 6 34 says mm -hmm. it says so don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries today's trouble is enough for today all right so take one day at a time knowing that God will give us the strength he will provide for us day by day 
All right. This is a very disciplinary one, though. We need to discipline ourselves because this is very, uh, you know, sometimes you worry about something, you have an exam tomorrow, and you have to control yourself. Lord, I know I've, I've studied enough, but still yet, you still worry, right? Yes. And then you might have some appointment tomorrow, and you have to go to court, or you have to uh, give a, a speech or, or, or do some kind of, give a class, you know, and, and it kind of makes you a little anxious. There is another verse in, I think it's Philippians 4, 6, that says, be anxious over nothing, but make your request known to God in prayer. So it's very good then that whenever something is, is, is giving us anxiety, we need to take it to God and pray, as all you rightly said, Pastor. Yes. All right. So back to Lazarus' story, my friends. And here we want to uh, end up our first section. Uh, Christ delayed and Lazarus died. How did Jesus describe his condition? All right. Back to the story as we introduce it. You know, in John 11, 11, it says, Then Jesus said, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But now I go that I may wake him. Mm -hmm. So so Jesus used the word sleep here. Yes. But but it said it said Lazarus was dead. Yes. Why did Jesus then use the word sleep instead of dead? dead. Why didn't he speak clearly? Uh, why he used the word sleep and dead at the same time? Is there anything relating to death and sleep like relating? Yes, okay. So as we see here, it gives us the answer. It says because death is like a sleep. Okay. We are unconscious until we are weak, until this big event. All right. And as Christians, we all look forward to this big day. All right. And it is called the resurrection morning. That day when Jesus will appear in the clouds of glory, he will give the shout, you know, the, like with the voice of an archangel. All right. And the dead in Christ will rise. All right. And so uh, this is a big, it's a big event. All right. This is the culmination of our, our, our belief, our hopes, the promises that God has for us. And so what Jesus was saying here, though, that even though there will be a literal day when all the dead who die in Christ will, resur will resurrect, Jesus was saying, I'm going to do this today. Ah, all right. Okay. He was going to do it. The same day for his friend, all right? He says, I go that I be awakened from his sleep, all right? And so, friends, we, we finish off right here. Very good. And we'd like to encourage you to put your life in Jesus' hand. Maybe you're going through some sickness. Mm -hmm. Maybe you're going through setbacks in life. But we just want to encourage you to keep in mind that God is in control of your life. And even if you have to die, if you die in him, your death will not be the end because we have hope. And when Jesus comes again, he can resurrect you back to eternal life. So when we come back in our next study, we have a part two of this study about rest. We will talk about a little more about rest and death and the difference and why did Jesus compare the two of them together. So my friends, thank God for his word and we are so happy for this lesson today. And as Pastor rightly said, we need to be ready and we know that Jesus is in control. So once our life, like Lazarus, is hidden in Jesus, when we die, God will wake us up back again. All right? Turn to the Bible, death is like a sleep and Jesus is the one to wake us up back and he calls at the resurrection. So let us close off today and hope to see you on our next study. All right? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for what we have learned. And we pray, O oh God, that you will bless our viewers. And if they are passing through these, any situation health-wise that they cannot sleep, we do hope that these tips may be helpful to them and it will um, grant them the blessing to have a good night rest and also a better health. And help us to always be ready when Jesus comes, that if we die, he will call us back to life. Father, bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hope to see you on our next studies. God bless and take care of yourself. And until then.